Hello there, it is I, Jamie Blatant, purveyor of fine electrical installations and all-round electrical internet gobshy. This is a little precursor to a 2391 video I'm recording with Apprentice One to One and some other people, and it's just about checklists and how to utilize checklists and something that makes my life easier. Now, I'm gonna go little in the corner. There we are, I've gone little in the corner. You can see that I'm up here now looking down to my own work. A lot of people get confused in the practical exam about the sequence of a test. And in plain English, a lot of people just get flustered and bamboozled and confused and don't know what the fuck we're doing. So this video is to get over that. Now, I'm a big believer in lists. I love lists. Look, I've got a list here now telling me how big something needs to be. Uh, I've got a list here that tells me my credit card numbers won't give you that one. I've got a list here to remind me to do something. I'm a big fan of lists and checklists, which is why you've got this sequence of tests in Reg 643.1, which there lists the correct sequence to a test in. Brilliant, you might say, but you've got to remember that. Well, you haven't really, because then there's this thing. I never use this. This clipper People are cripplers, do people call this or some shit? I don't use it myself, but it's available if you like to remember things by mnemonics. Continuity ring file insulation's polarity, yeah? I ate it because, if anyone recognises that, I'm lit in the corner. That's a test sheet, which I will now bring up. Yeah, there you go. There's the schedule of test results. You'll find that this has already got that done for you. So zoom in. First part of it, look. The circuit number, there's a thick black line just here, right? Everything before that thick black line where this column is lower is information that you gather off the installation. The circuit number, you gather that. The description, you gather that. The BSEN, the type, the rating, the brake capacity, the RCD milliamp, the maximum fit ZS, the reference method, the live and the earth size, as of today, brown books and all that, yeah? You gather that information. That's just data you acquire. You can fill all that in before you start. Then... After the black line is all the tests you've got to do. What I do is I utilize this like a checklist. And I'm going to show you why in a second. And I put a line through any tests I don't have to do. Then I end up with a load of blank boxes that I need to fill in. Then I play fill it in. Checklists are amazing. And I will show you why now. But what I am getting at is you have always got this sheet that's on the screen in front of me now. You have always got a checklist. You have always got a test sheet. There is no reason for you to get confused and bamboozled because you get stuck, look at your sheet, work out where you are. One thing to remember is don't write on scrap paper. Always write on your sheet. Always fill your sheet in sequentially. Then when you get lost, to work out where you are when you're getting flustered, look at your test sheet, see where the last entry is. Then you know you're there. Because believe me, in a 2391 exam, people do get flustered and bamboozled and just start crying. But why are checklists important? Let's have a look. My video software is going to absolutely do it. It's not going to play this, but that is what it is. So let's have a look at someone and a type of person that uses checklists. So we'll just watch this video. If anyone's been on a course, man, this is exactly how I deliver it in a course. When aviation first began with the Wright brothers, checklists did not exist. But as more complex airplanes were created, the probability of making a mistake and having a fatal error increased drastically. One of the first airplanes to ever have a checklist was the Boeing B-17. On the first B-17 flight, the airplane crashed after takeoff because the pilot forgot to remove the elevator lock, not allowing him to pitch the nose up. After this tragedy, checklists were born to help prevent accidents like this one from occurring. I'm not going to play the whole of that video, and I thank you to ERAU Special VRF who got that video that I use in all my courses. I'll link it in the description below. What I'm trying to say is, you're not cleverer than a pilot. You're just some scumbag electrician. You're not cleverer than a pilot, and pilots use checklists. So, work out what checklist you want to use. Do you want to use the test sheet? Do you want to use the on-site guide? Do you want to use guidance note 3? Do you want to use regulation 643.1? Or do you want to use cripplers written on a sheet? Whichever one of those checklists you want to use, use it. Then when you're in the exam doing the business, when you get flustered and lost, it's just a case of going, stop. Where was I? I was here and I'll carry on. And it will save you a lot of us in the future. And it will certainly save you a lot of us in the 2391 exam. That is my top tip for the 2391 exam. And now I've got to edit this video and get it out. Damn. See you later.